we're going to look at a chemical reaction, uh, quite an unusual one, which is why it's going to be a phenomenon. And we're going to start with two cannonballs. And so be careful because they are heavy. So wear closed toes, substantial shoes, uh, and obviously wear goggles. Uh, one of the cannonballs is covered tightly and smoothly with aluminum foil, and the second cannonball is just as it is, and if it's got rust on it, that's very much okay. So here are the formulas uh, that are involved, the symbol for aluminum, and the formula for the rust on top of the iron cannonball, iron 3 oxide. Uh, hold your thumbs, fingers clear, and hold the cannonballs tightly, do not let them drop. So you're going to think, how will you know if a reaction has occurred and what are you going to look for? Let's do the reaction by smacking the cannonballs together very sharply, uh, crash them together, uh, but do watch where your, your thumbs are. So if we look at the reaction, uh, when they crash together, you see sparks. If you don't, hit them a little harder, uh, but not if you're going to drop the cannonballs. If you do it over a desk, it, they're not going to um, hit your, your feet. Uh, the chemical reaction is the aluminum, uh, just the aluminum foil, is reacting with the rust and it gives metallic iron and aluminum oxide. And here's the formula for the reaction at the bottom, a uh, balanced equation, um, and uh, you'll see that all of the chemicals are in the solid state. Um, but it releases energy. We can actually see uh, the light energy, uh, glowing sparks of uh, atoms of atoms of iron uh, that are being ejected from the, from the reaction. And so the energy, it's enthalpy, and we show that as delta H, and it's a negative value. So the aluminum becomes aluminum oxide, taking oxygen from the iron 3 oxide, which then becomes iron. So it's a redox reaction as well. So the aluminum is gaining uh, oxygen, uh, the iron is being reduced and losing oxygen. So if you just place the cannonballs next to each other, so the aluminum is touching mm. the rust, the iron 3 oxide, a reaction doesn't occur. So you need something else for the reaction to take place. You need that mechanical energy when the balls are smacked together. So that's going to be different from the energy that's produced. So you are providing the activation energy, and this particular reaction requires a considerable one. So once you've got that mechanical energy and hit them together, you get the reaction. And energy is produced here, light energy at the end, and sound energy. You can hear it as well. After the reaction, you might be able to see small amounts of uh, aluminum oxide, uh, which is the product, the oxidation of the aluminum, and uh, both on the aluminum foil, but it might be slightly easier to see on the um, uncovered cannonball. So describe the reaction you have got, the appearances of the reactants and the products, and describe what happens to the energy uh, so there's some detail that you need it. So at the end of the reaction, even though that you used uh, a large amount of activation energy by smacking them together, uh, you, the reaction is exothermic. Delta H is negative and energy is produced. And how do we know a reaction has taken place? Well, different chemicals are formed. The products are different from the reactants. Uh, energy is released or taken in in a chemical reaction. Here it's released. And often reactions are difficult to reverse, so the products stay as they are. 
without seesawing backwards. And this reaction is quite an amazing one. Uh, it's done on a small scale with small uh, areas that are being smacked together on the two cannonballs. Uh, but if you start with powdered aluminum and powdered iron three oxide, and you need uh, a good trigger um, activation energy to get it to go, large amounts of energy are produced. And you'll see some videos where if it's done on top of an automobile engine block, it actually melts uh, a, an engine block. So that's the, uh, the reaction and want to thank Washington International School and their team science, uh, not only to be able to use the labs for the video above and their student involvement. Thank you.